Jordan Alvarez is an offensive superstar, a wonder hitter, and a cool kid. But of course, you must know that already. But do you know about his hot wife? his lifestyle, or how many years it's taken his family before they could actually watch him play in the MLB for the first time? Well, stick around to find out. Alvarez was christened Jordan Ruben Alvarez, but of course, like we love to do with our favorite players, we give them nicknames. It can be a really awkward name, sometimes it fits, and sometimes it just makes you wonder if the player even likes it. We didn't actually nickname Alvarez Air Jordan, but the guys at Loopholes for Sports 610 Radio tried to give him a name in one of their episodes and got some help from their audience. This was after Running Game Clothing had printed t-shirts that read Air Jordan on them. But then the host on Loopholes said Air Jordan wouldn't stick, suggesting that Alvarez be given a better one. But Air Jordan did stick and we love it. It fits perfectly. Alvarez is an incredible hitter that basically makes baseballs fly high in the air for home runs. But it wasn't always like this. His beginning was tough. Born in Las Tunas, Cuba, on June 27, 1997, to father Augustine Eduardo Alvarez and mother Mylin Cadagan Reyes, Jordan is of Cuban descent and has a younger brother named Yonder Alvarez Cadagan. Alvarez had played for the Leñadores de Lunas Tunas in the Cuban National Series for two seasons, and his father, seeing that his son was so into baseball, decided to make possible a conducive environment to nurture the kid's talent. One of the first things he did was to relocate his family to the Dominican Republic in 2014, and while in search of a baseball program, they met Aldo Marrero, a former minor league coach for the White Sox. Marrero was pleased with the kid, but the same could not be said about the scouts. The frustrated Marrero commented that, We spent a lot of time working hard and getting better, but it was hard to get tryouts with teams. Scouts said he looked lazy and he wasn't athletic enough. They said he doesn't have enough power to be a corner outfielder. They would say things to me like, Aldo, he has a good bat but no position, and Aldo, we're out of money. I heard it all. But dedicated as he was, Jordan improved drastically, becoming stronger and faster and hitting like a hungry beast. Then the scouts came pouring in, left, right, and center, but then something happened that was a major blow as he got separated from his family. In order to move to the US, he defected from Cuba and took residence in Haiti in 2016, but he did this alone as his family went back to Cuba to continue their lives. For a teenager, this must have been a truly tough and uncertain period for him. Fortunately, he wasn't alone. There were other Cuban baseballers like him in Haiti who were just looking for a bigger platform to showcase their talents. Alvarez connected with future Astros teammate Yuli Gurriel and his brother Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Then he moved to West Palm Beach, Florida in the U.S. There, Houston Astros senior scouting advisor Charlie Gonzalez was thrilled as he watched him practice and had said of him, he was just so calm. Saw the ball well, I saw him take a couple balls, 95 miles an hour, up near his Adam's apple. And a lot of guys, they'd be diving or bailing out the next pitch. He just hung right in there. He obviously was impressed by the kid because he had subsequently convinced the Astros to sign him up and the kid showed eagerness to work with the team too. However, the Astros had eyes for Yuli Gurriel and had spent beyond the limits of their bonus pool and the Dodgers bid higher at $2 million and snatched Alvarez from under their nose. But this deal was an afterthought for the Dodgers who were just in need of a relieving pitcher, so they traded him back to the Astros for Josh Fields. Years later, the Astros are happy they made that trade, and for the Dodgers, well, their president of baseball operations, Andrew Friedman, later expressed regret for his decision. The kid started his professional career with the Dominican Summer League Astros in 2016 and spent the rest of the year with an OPS of 974 and batting average of 341 in just 16 games. He went on to play for other teams and his last team in the minor league was with the Round Rock Express in 2019. Before he was called up as the number three prospect for the Astros, he batted 343 with 50 runs, 23 home runs, 38 walks, 
walks and 71 RBIs, and was the number 23 prospect in MLB.com. Now, a major leaguer, Alvarez was still a teenager without his biological family in the U.S. It was just him, his team, and baseball. Back home in Las Tunas, Cuba, his father could only watch the game on the At Bat app a day or two after most live games were aired. Augustine Alvarez had mixed feelings. He was both sad and proud. 2019, during the first season of Air Jordan in the Major League, Augustine had said during a call from Cuba that, the greatest pain in my life is not having my son by my side, but it also brings me so much joy to see him happy and grow as a man. As a father, so proud of him. He's on his own and walking on his own two feet. That's what you want, and you want what's best for your children. He made all the sacrifices. We just supported him. And Jordan didn't let himself or his family down. His first season with the Astros started pretty well as he became the first Astro to homer in his first two games. But before we could all recover from that feat, Jordan recorded 16 runs in his first 12 games, becoming the first player in MLB history to ever do it. He broke a few franchise records, and at the end of 2019, he had 27 home runs, 75 RBIs, and a batting average of 313. But here is the biggest one. He won the Rookie of the Year unanimously, and his slugging percentage of 655 and OPS of 1.067 was the highest by any Rookie of the Year in baseball history history. The one who held the record before was Shoeless Joe Jackson as far back as 1911. But do you know what was so special about all his accomplishments? It was the fact that he had done all of these even after coming into the season late. Pops must be proud. Unfortunately, his family back in Cuba still couldn't join him in the U.S., but at least his own daughter and his wife, Monica Quieros, could. She had posted in October 2019 on her Instagram a picture of herself loved up with Alvarez and their cute little daughter, Moana, with the caption, We're going to the World Series. They now have another child, a boy, but not much is known about this couple aside from what they both post on their official Instagram accounts which gives us an idea that they've been together for a while and the wife has always been there with him. Cute photos like this and this just leave one in awe. All right, one last one before we move on. Okay, and another one. Their picture together first came up in 2018 and then it was reportedly announced that they were engaged in 2020. Mind you, the 2020 season was not a totally great one for Jordan because he could not play only two games as he suffered through a disease and a tough surgery on both of his knees. Thankfully, it wasn't a career-ending struggle. 2021 came with so many great performances from the star outfielder. He registered his first 100th run, became the seventh fastest player in the MLB history to reach 100 RBIs, and the fastest overall to do so since the beginning of the expansion era 1961. As the league reached its crescendo, Alvarez led his team in RBIs with 104, strikeouts with 145, and in runs with 33. The American League Championship Series came rolling in. Alvarez gave an excellent performance with a record-breaking 552 batting average that won him the ALCS MVP award. He was the first designated hitter since David Ortiz and the fourth Cuban to win this award, but this was not enough to win him his first championship series. However, this didn't stop him from getting a contract extension on June 2nd, 2022. The following year, the contract is reportedly worth $115 million and would last for six years. Four days later, after the contract extension, he was named AL Player of the Week for the first time in his career. He also won his first Player of the Month in his career in the month of June. Then he was called to his first MLB All-Star Game as a reserve in July. And finally, what we've all been waiting for happened on August 23rd, 2022, when his father, mother, and brother finally came to the U.S. to watch him play for the first time. They were all dressed in the number 44 jersey of Alvarez, and you could tell that it was an emotional experience. Father told the Associated Press in Spanish that this is one of the biggest moments in my entire life. And I could be able to say so many words, but the truth is that there are no words to express what I'm feeling right now. To say thank you, Alvarez gave them a 4-2 win over the Minnesota Twins. His mom also had nice things to say. I'm just proud. And this is a feeling that only a mom knows what it feels like. I don't have words to express what I'm feeling right now and what's going through my mind right now. If you enjoyed this video about Jordan and Alvarez, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.